I am Christine Cummerford of Smart Tribes Institute, and I am a leadership and culture coach. We use neuroscience and neurolinguistic based, based tools and techniques to help you and your team get the results that you want. So let's talk about a hot topic that I'm noticing a lot with our clients right now, which is listening. How do we actually become a better listener, especially in these crazy times where we're feeling really disconnected from each other? So let's look at this. And then um, on the page uh, below, you're going to uh, be able to download our listening infographic, which will reinforce what you learned today. All right, cool. So three practices to become a better listener. Um, listening makes us a more engaged uh, leader, a more exceptional leader, and we want to be a more efficient leader as well. And we want to be more effective at stepping onto the map of somebody else's world. And one of the biggest challenges I find with listening is that we assume that we know what it's like to be somebody else and we do not. So first we wanna build rapport. We wanna do some physical body mirroring. We wanna mirror their body posture gesture. Uh, we want to start to understand what it feels like to be them. We always take a beat when we do this. We don't, if somebody crosses their arms, we don't want to immediately cross our arms. We want to take a couple breaths and then we gradually cross our arms. We're trying to feel what it feels like to be them. Keyword and gesture backtracking. If they say, um, it's really important to me to, to get such and such done. Say, wow, yeah, it sounds like it's really important to get such and such done. Paraphrasing is a totally bad idea. Please never use paraphrasing. I don't know who started that, really bad idea. Paraphrasing, you're changing, you're, you're putting your experience all over somebody else's experience. It's not cool. Backtracking on their keywords and key phrases. If they say, I really need to go the extra mile, say, yeah, well, let's talk about what do we need to do to go the extra mile? We're using some of their keywords and phrases so that they can actually feel like we're them. We want them to experience us as same as in their creature brain, if you will. Okay, we want them to feel safe. We want to open a listening space in their prefrontal cortex. Rapport is about caring. It's not about controlling or manipulating. Step number two, we wanna use the meta model. This is the whopper. If this is the only thing you take away, please take this away, it's so important. When people say, this is hard, Often someone will say, yeah, I know, you know? No, you don't know what hard feels like to them. With the meta model, we're asking them questions like, what specifically, how specifically, in comparison to who or what specifically? So if someone says, this is really difficult, we say, how specifically is it difficult? Uh, difficult compared to what? We're trying to get on their map of the world to understand what difficult means because we don't know. So the meta model helps us get clarification. The meta model helps us see the world from somebody else's perspective, something other than our own. Without clarifying what they really mean, we can't really effectively support them. Next, step three, let's make it easier for them to express themselves. So ineffective listening, ineffective communication often occurs when we have a lack of the three key emotional experiences that we all as humans crave. And those are safety, belonging, and mattering, right? If people don't feel safe, they might have defensive behavior, aggressive interactions, conflict avoidance, um, too busy making sure that they are not harmed emotionally or physically to listen. Lack of belonging. Without belonging, people won't care enough to share what they wanna say. They won't feel like we're in this together, right? They won't care to listen to the other person either. So if you feel like you don't care, start to notice, do you wanna belong with this person? Cause you're in it together, so you may as well. Okay, listening is a two-way street. Third, mattering. If people don't feel that they matter, that they are important, that they are appreciated, respected, valued, they won't feel heard, understood, honored, okay? We have to give people the emotional experience of safety, belonging, mattering, especially as leaders. And I know leaders will often say to me, but what about me? What about my safety, belonging, mattering? It's important too. However, as the leader, you signed up for the privilege 
of leadership. Leadership is not an entitlement, it's a privilege. And if you signed up for the privilege of leadership, you need to get on their map of the world first, okay? So here's what we can take away from this. Uh, first, we wanna make sure that we are building rapport with them and body posture gesture, uh, keyword backtracking, physical mirroring is a great way to do that. It works at the level of the creature brain. Then we wanna use the meta model so we don't make assumptions. What specifically is difficult about that? How specifically compared to what? Find out what their emotional experience is. And then we wanna make it three easier for them to express themselves. What are they really asking you for? Safety, belonging, or mattering? Bring it. Okay, if they're asking you for safety, validate, normalize their concerns. Wow, yeah, if, you, if I were in your situation, I'd be really concerned about that too. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Belonging, well, how can we work on this together? Mattering, I really see um, your insights here and I'm finding them really helpful. Let's talk about what else you envision. So we want to alleviate suffering. We wanna be aware of our people and if they're suffering. We want to put their personal struggles on the radar and not dismiss them as bad for the organization. We want to build trust. We want to focus on cultivating trust. We don't, uh, we want to realize that we have to lead by example. So yeah, we have to constantly grow as leaders. That's why we have coaches, right? We want to prioritize people, not business. If we prioritize the people, and make sure that they are feeling safety, belonging, mattering, they're being listened to, et cetera, the business will succeed. Now, I'm not saying keep people on board that aren't helping the business go forward. We have to also balance what is the highest good for all concerned. And sometimes the highest good is for a person to move on to another job adventure. When we use these techniques, these listening techniques, we find that our clients get 22% or greater increased profit per employee, 90% plus increased retention, 67 to 100% more employee engagement, plus a bunch more. What are your questions? How do you want to grow as a leader? Please put them in the comments below and I'll answer them on a future video. Thank you for joining me today.